In this video, I'm gonna talk about five things that I do before any coding interview. And I really think that these tips are gonna be a great use of your time because they're easy to accomplish, but they tend to have a very high impact. Number one, ask the recruiter if they can share what will be asked in each interview. Most of the time, they're just gonna tell you generally data structure and algorithms, you have to do some system design and that's all they'll give you. But every now and then they will share more and give you specifics as to what to study. I know that might sound crazy, but recruiters, they do have an incentive for you to get hired. I've always worked under the assumption that it doesn't hurt to ask even if they say no. And doing this will definitely give you an edge because you'll have more focused study prep. I always do this and this has helped me a few times. A few years ago when I was interviewing at a bunch of tech companies, I asked my recruiter and they actually told me, don't study DP problems, dynamic programming problems. You don't even need to touch it because apparently the, the recruiter knew that the engineers don't ask those types of problems. And this was really helpful for me because dynamic programming problems suck and there's no point to study it if it's not going to be asked. Another example is I was told to prepare for concurrency and multi-threading questions in one of the interviews. And I wasn't even planning on preparing for those types of topics. So this was super helpful. Number two, brush up on language specifics with whatever language you're gonna interview in. So my recommendation here is to focus on general syntax, common utility classes and methods, and the time and space complexity of common methods. The way my brain works is I'm always thinking of the worst case scenario. And in an interview setting, the worst case scenario would be not being able to look up anything. I do think it's stupid if you don't get to look up anything in an interview because we do this all the time for our jobs, but every now and then you will get an interview where you're not allowed to look up anything. So going over general syntax and common methods, this can be really beneficial and actually save you in an interview where you can't do that. My preferred language is Java. That's always what I interview in. So usually before interviews, I will look up different common utility classes for strings, maps, queues, and then some others. And doing this has a very real benefit because if you do this enough times after a bunch of interviews, you're gonna gain a lot of knowledge. You're gonna really know the intricate details of a lot of these common methods that you use all the time. Being able to know what's going on under the hood can really give you an edge up on everyone else. And I'm not saying you have to spend many hours to do this. It's really just going on whatever documentation for your language and reading over some of the common tools. Number three, look over the resume that you applied with. You should be able to speak very confidently about everything you listed on your resume. I know that might sound very obvious, but you'd be surprised with how many people will list out every tool, every framework, every language they've ever touched and put it on their resume when in fact they aren't able to talk in depth about it at all. In my opinion, anything you list on your resume is fair game for an interviewer to ask about. So that's why it's important that you only list things that you are very confident that you can have a technical discussion about. Technical interviews don't always mean coding. You know, they can also just mean speaking in detail about a technical topic. And as you actually gain more experience, you start doing less coding, right? And more planning and more system design and things like that. So being able to talk technically about the tools and projects that you've worked on is almost just as important as the coding aspect that everyone focuses on. Another thing to mention is that speaking about your own experiences and projects, this should be where you shine because these should be the easiest questions to answer because they're related to you. Imagine you have two candidates, candidate A and candidate B. Candidate A scores a four out of five on the technical coding round and a five out of five on the behavioral round where they had to explain projects and past work experience in detail. Candidate B scores a five out of five on the technical coding round and a four out of five on the behavioral round. This is just my opinion, but I think candidate A 
performed better overall. I believe everyone should be able to score a five out of five in behaviorals since they're questions only relating to your past experiences. The way I like to think about this is these are questions that you essentially already know the answer to beforehand. This is why it's so critical to read your resume in depth and have experiences that you can speak about for all major topics that you listed. Another thing to mention is that in on-site interviews where you have four or five interviews in one day, oftentimes you have one behavioral interview but several technical interviews. Why does that matter? You have more chances to do well in the technical rounds, but you only have one chance to show that you can confidently speak about your experience. Number four, practice speaking out loud in both the technical and behavioral rounds. I know public speaking can be very intimidating, but it definitely gets easier the more you practice. And this step is especially critical. If you haven't interviewed in a while, you're gonna be rusty. You don't wanna do this for the first time when it matters most and you know, you're in the hot seat and you need to explain about your past experiences or walk through a solution that you just coded up. It's really important to remove filler words such as um and like just completely. If you have too many filler words, it can be very distracting for your interviewer. So what does this mean in practice? Say you're studying leak code, you should read the problem out loud to yourself, explain all the potential solutions to yourself out loud. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm telling you it will definitely help. And as you code your solution, Talk about each line as you write it. You're gonna notice that, you know, the first few times you do this, it's gonna be really weird and it's gonna feel unnatural because it kind of is, you're talking to yourself. But the more you do it, you're gonna realize it gets easier and easier. And when you go in the interview and you do the same thing, it's gonna feel like nothing. It's gonna feel like you just are practicing. The last thing that you should do before any coding interview is be ready with questions to ask your interviewer at the end. At the end of most interviews, you will be asked, do you have any questions for me, right? It is asked every single time. Ask something, anything, I don't care what it is. Ask something. What is most interesting about your work? What is the biggest challenge that you've run into? How big is your team? What is something that you wish you could change? It really doesn't matter what you ask, just please ask something. It shows that you are genuinely interested in the position. As you can see, all of these things that I've talked about are pretty low hanging fruit. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort, but it really goes a long way. For more interview prep tips, definitely subscribe and please like the video if you got something out of it. I'm really trying to grow my channel this year. I've been at this YouTube thing for a super long time now and I want to grow more. Also, if you go to my website, algoswithmichael.com and sign up for the newsletter, you can get free lessons relating to the sliding window algorithm. So if you're preparing for coding interviews, these lessons are very helpful. And with that, that is all I have for you guys today. See you next time.